Look, Halloween is so stupid, dressing up and pretending to be someone you're not. You're an actor. <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Halloween TV episodes. Hi, honey. I'm home. <laughs> Can I speak to you a minute? How can a pumpkin costume be sexy? It was carved in strategic places. For this list, we're looking at episodes of live action shows that bring out the spirit of All Hallows' Eve. What's your favorite Halloween episode? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Stevel, Family Matters By this point in Family Matters, Steve Urkel had already invented a cloning machine and a teleportation pad. So it was only a matter of time until he tangoed with an evil dummy, even if it was just a nightmare. A dummy that looks exactly like Steve. How disturbing. <laughs> Giving Chucky a run for his money, Steve will want Steve all to himself. The dummy's pursuit of the Winslow family makes leeway for a lot of creative and creepy scenarios, most memorably turning Harriet into a jack-in-the-box. I knew she'd pop up somewhere. Steve, get me a baseball bat. I'm gonna knock this dummy upside his head. Growing up, this episode had us sleeping with the lights on. Looking back years later, however, it's admittedly pretty funny seeing a TGIF sitcom take such a twisted turn. Plus, how can you not smile at a dummy that dances? Whether you laugh or tremble, steve is unforgettable. I took my wife to the islands. Jamaica? No. She wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> Number 9. Who Got D Pregnant? It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. This episode catches the audience off guard with its Halloween theme. I'm not fat, I'm pregnant. I feel like you say that all the time now. The gang's plan to spend a night at the museum is put on hold when D claims that one of the guys got her pregnant. Finding that the conception must have occurred on Halloween, they attempt to piece together that night's events. The episode not only makes hilarious use of the Rashomon effect, but also cleverly ties everyone's costumes into the story. What is that? What, what even is that? I'm that character from Lord of the Rings, Vigil Morgenstein. Okay, that is not the character's name. That's the actor's name. And you're not even getting that right. You're totally, totally boning me here, bro. Dennis is one half of the Mario Brothers, Mac is Vigio Morgenstein, Charlie is the vampire of the opera, Dee is a birdie angel, and Frank is Spider-Man. First of all, don't say I went as Spider-Man. I didn't go as Spider-Man. I was Man-Spider. Right. Totally different. Uh, we mean Man-Spider. A costume mix-up leads to a horrifying revelation, although the true identity of Dee's baby daddy thankfully isn't so gross. Are you absolutely sure that you and I did not have sex and that that's not my... Uh, yeah. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Number 8. Greg Pakaitis, Parks and Recreation after a rocky first season, Parks and Recreation found its groove in season two. Greg Pakaitis stood out as one of the show's first truly great episodes, not to mention one of the funniest Halloween episodes ever. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I think you do. It ends today, Pakaitis. It ends. Two. Day. Leslie has always been passionate about her job, but Greg Pakaitis brings out an especially aggressive side of her. Treating this teenage prankster like public enemy number one, Leslie is determined to end his trickery for good. Okay, the gloves are coming off. What's that? I think you know what that is. Not even Burt Macklin can break Pakaitis, but the parks department gets to the center of the peach by the night's end. By bringing down her arch nemesis, Leslie also develops a genuine friendship with Andy. I believe that you're innocent until proven guilty in this country. That's the cornerstone of democracy. Sure. On the other hand, Greg Pakaitis is a little punk. And I kind of want to TP his house. Let's do it. Meanwhile, Anne throws a Halloween party that's DOA. That is until Tom brings it to life. All right, y'all. Take the pigs in the blanket and put them to sleep. It's time to get wild. Number seven, Halloween, The Office. Like Parks and Rec, The Office came into its own during season two, and Halloween was one of several episodes that helped shape the show's unique identity. Honestly, Halloween at Dunder Mifflin isn't too different from a normal day. It's business as usual for some of the employees, while Jim focuses his energy into toying with Dwight. 
What do you mean? Of course martial arts training is relevant. Oh, excuse me. I know about a billion Asians that would beg to differ. Uh, yeah, I get a little frustrated when I'm dealing with incompetence. Of course, this day stands out for a couple of reasons. Almost everyone is wearing a goofy costume, which hilariously contrasts Michael's obligation to fire one of his workers. In typical office fashion, the day ends on an awkward note, but at least Devin is dressed for unemployment. This is You're unbelievable! I just hope that you and I can remain friends. Between two-headed Michael and three-hole punch Jim, this episode has given us no shortage of inspired costume ideas. <clears throat> can I speak to you a minute? Um, yes. Number six, slutty pumpkin, how I met your mother. How can a pumpkin costume be sexy? It was carved in strategic places. The mother wasn't this sitcom's only mystery woman. In season one, Ted recounts his evening with a woman dressed as a pumpkin, or a slutty pumpkin as everyone calls her. Sadly, her number got lost on a Kit Kat bar wrapper. Where's the Kit Kat? Where's the Kit Kat? Much like Linus in It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, Ted returns to the same party every year, hoping she'll return. We might not get Snoopy as a World War I flying ace, but we do get to see Barney in the danger zone. So what does a fella have to do to get laid around here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, because I'm wearing a lay. <laughs> well, it isn't funny if you explain the joke. A mix of one-liners, visual gags, and romance made for one of the show's most iconic episodes. Oh, and in case you were wondering, the slutty pumpkin isn't the mother, but she does share a resemblance to Katie Holmes. Happy Halloween. And just like that, I was taken back 10 years to the hopeful kid in the hanging Chad costume falling head over heels for the slutty pumpkin. Number five, epidemiology, community. What do zombies, George Takei, and the music of ABBA all have in common? Absolutely nothing, but they go together flawlessly in this uproarious episode. Due to an incompetent purchase on the Dean's behalf, a Halloween party turns into a biohazard. What about the taco meat stuff? The what? The classic flavor? Huh? Huh? The one with the goofy label here. What goofy label? What do you? Classified Phoenix. If found, repeat key phrase. Echo Tango X Ray Nine Nine Seven. Yeah, sounds delicious. It isn't long until a zombie apocalypse of sorts breaks out. Although it's hard to take the situation that seriously when the only doctor is dressed as a banana. I forgot one symptom. Slurred speed. Whoa! Oh, you got bit. It felt like maybe I was. Community was always at its best whenever the writers went into full-blown parody mode, and Epidemiology ranks up there with the funniest zombie comedies ever. Ah, that's my jacket! Ah. My jacket! You're stretching it! You're stretching it! The episode also offers some welcome character development for Troy, as he embraces his inner nerd and his inner action hero. We knew the sexy vampire had it in him. Number four, the one with the Halloween party, Friends. Look, Halloween is so stupid, dressing up and pretending to be someone you're not. <laughs> you're an actor. Thanksgiving might have been its specialty, but Friends dish out a Halloween treat in season eight. The holiday brings out Rachel's maternal side, while Joey channels Chandler, although he doesn't wear everything he owns this time. How is that me? Okay. <clears throat> I'm Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever wanted to see a potato satellite arm wrestle a pink bunny, this episode will fulfill that strange request. So, are you getting tired? Oh, I can do this all day. <laughs> yeah, me too. As funny as Chandler and Ross's costumes are, Gunther is Charlie Brown maybe the most fitting outfit at Monica's party. Lisa Kudrow singled this out as her favorite episode, noting that it gave people a much needed laugh during a difficult time for the country. It was also a strong showcase for Kudrow, who got to play Phoebe and her twin sister Ursula while acting opposite Sean Penn. Number three, Halloween, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Given its horror roots, Buffy had a year-round Halloween-y vibe. So whenever the show turned in an official Halloween episode, the results were always extra special. You're missing the whole point of Halloween. Free candy? It's come as you are at night. The perfect chance for a girl to get sexy and wild with no repercussions. Oh, I don't get wild. Wild on me equals spaz. It was tempting to select fear itself, if only to see Anya dressed as her greatest fear, a bunny. Yet it's hard to top Buffy's inaugural Halloween episode, 
which saw a spell turn Sunnydale locals into their costumes. This premise has been done in a few other shows, but Buffy executed the idea with the most wit and imagination. The episode allows several characters to play against type, transforming Buffy into a damsel and Xander into a no-nonsense soldier. This ain't no tea party, princess. Sooner or later, you're gonna have to fight. All the while, Willow has an out-of-body experience. Oh my god. I'm a real ghost. Fortunately, Buffy is ready to kick ass again before sunrise. Hi, honey. I'm home. <laughs> Number two, and then there was Sean, Boy Meets World. Granted, this episode doesn't take place on Halloween, and it initially aired in February. Due to its dark storyline and wicked sense of humor, though, we've all come to associate it with the holiday. Locked in school with a masked lunatic, Sean attempts to navigate his friends through a horror movie. This doesn't make any sense. It does if you've seen as many horror films as I have. The episode encompasses the meta humor of Scream, albeit with a zanier edge. There's even room for an I Know What You Did Last Summer alumna in Jennifer Love Hewitt. Hi, Eric Matthews, and you are? Jennifer Love Pfefferman. <laughs> Such a beautiful name. Come to think of it, you could argue that this was Scary Movie before Scary Movie. Ah! There's like 15 retainers in there! For all of its laughs and screams, most of which come courtesy of Angela, the ending offers a surprisingly deep revelation about Sean's dynamic with Cory and Topanga. You guys have been together since before I even knew you. And if you're not, then I guess I feel like there's nothing I can depend on. Before we unveil our spookiest number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Halloween, Modern Family. This episode won an Emmy for a reason. All I ask, all I ask, is that you leave me Halloween. Yeah, Halloween, I realize it is a crazy ass holiday for a grown woman to care about this much, but it is my crazy ass holiday. Jackdo Lantern, Blackish. Dre's Obama costume is spot on. Oh my, hello, Mr. President. <laughs> okay, Dre. Inauguration Michelle or Teen Choice Michelle? Hex and the Single Guy, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Don't mess with the interior designer from Beetlejuice. You no, know, we all had a good laugh, but this whole thing is bogus and you, sir, are a fake. Nobody calls me the F word. <laughs> it's the Great Pumpkin, Sam Winchester, Supernatural. The Winchesters do Halloween. It's a natural fit. It's Halloween, man. Yeah, for us, every day is Halloween. Miracle on Dead Street, fresh off the boat, Dead Street springs to life with Mr. T. <laughs> Ooh, UPS delivery lamb, nice costume, Emery. You two, Evan, a lazy goalie, scary for your teammates. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Halloween, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Ever since the first Halloween heist, Brooklyn Nine-Nine has found new ways to top itself every October. By season five, you'd think that the writers would run out of tricks and treats. This is the show's best Halloween episode for a few seasons, though. Staying true to the previous heists, there are twists and turns around every corner, keeping the audience on their toes. Hello, of Amy. Who? I don't know what's going on. The ensemble fires on all cylinders, whether the characters are teaming up or stabbing each other in the back. Ow! Charles, what are you doing? The hardest thing I've ever done, betraying you. The stakes are raised as well with a champion cummerbund on the line. While nobody technically wins the cummerbund, Amy does walk away with an engagement ring. Jake's unexpected proposal propels the episode from greatness to near perfection, balancing laughs and heart. Is this really happening? Is this part of the heist? If this is part of the heist, I will dump you so hard. No, please, Ames, like, it's really happening, okay? It's not part of the heist, I promise. This is real. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.